Hello and welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 mini project series and you can see I'm back in the sim now we should have all our models captured all our models cleaned up in Blender and the different various levels of detail that we need so I'm in Coventry this is the city centre and I'm in the developer cam mode so now what we need to do is load our project in so go to tools and project editor and project and open and then select our project and open that now this is important because we've just brought these models in they won't exist in the sim yet so you need to build your package so just click on your project name then go over to the inspector and again if you don't see it just click view and inspector and then click build package and depending on how many models you've got Will depend on how long this process takes for the console to appear it's going to look instant in this video because i'm going to edit it out because it could take a few minutes to do but it will take a little bit of time and the simulator will probably freeze up while it's building so just leave it for a while and, and wait for it to finish and now the console window has appeared that took about two minutes for me to build so as i say it will look instant in the video but i have edited out the build time and we can see there are no errors if you do get errors now i'm going to show you what you can do to fix any errors that you may have now when you first open your project and you search for your scenery you may find that it doesn't show up if this is the case for you it means one of your models has not worked and you'll tend to find if you just click build package and then wait for the console to come up you can see in the console we actually do have an error with one of our level of detail packages and this will be down to the blender 2 msfs plugin that hasn't exported correctly and i tend to find the best way of fixing this is just go into blender and then simply select the level of detail model that you've got the issue with so in this case it's the medium level of detail for Coventry Cathedral and then just go to the folder where you're exporting your models to and then you just want to override the one that had the problem but before you click export what you want to do is turn off the batch export LODs and the generate XML file options but then you can leave everything else the same and just click export and that will export that specific model out again and it should fix any issues. What you also may get is when you run the build package in the simulator, the simulator crashes and that's because there's another problem with the model that the simulator can't handle. And the best way to fix this is if you open up PowerShell or you can just use Windows command prompt and then you can use the fs package tool.exe that comes with the flight simulator sdk and then put the path to your project in and if you run that it will start building and then you'll see a console window appear and it will show all the files build in as they go the file that it stops on before the console disappears will be the file that you've got a problem with so again you can just go in and you can fix that if need be and once you've fixed all your errors if you come back in and just do another build just to make sure it builds successfully with no errors and you can always just double check again if you just click clear on the console window and then just run build again you can see now that it doesn't have anything to build and we're not getting any major errors we're getting a couple of ones that are saying it can't find a given path but we don't need to worry about those so there we go everything's built and now we should be able to load up our scenery so we can close our console window down by going to window and then clicking console and then we can expand our project and go to our scenery file and then over on the inspector if we just click load editor and now our scenery editor is loaded we should now be able to search for the items in here so if I search for Cov all of the things that I've named to do with Coventry should now show up and that's a good naming convention as well is to make sure you group everything with the same name so you can find it easier and now what we need to do is start getting these buildings and placing them in so you can use Google Maps as a reference if you know what you're looking for then you can just go straight in so I can tell this is Sky Dome down here this is the IKEA building so if we zoom down and all we need to do now is go down to the relevant model and click on it and then before we click add we can make sure it comes in at the right rotation and the right scale I know that in blender it tends to rotate them about 90 degrees so if you set the default rotation to 90 and for me the default scale is 24 it may be different for you but you can try 24 to start with if you want and then if you just click add you can see that's put our buildings in over the top of the other ones so the first thing we want to do is just take off snap to ground on properties and if you don't have the properties window 
you can just go to the scenery editor click view and then click properties and also if you don't see the objects editor you can go to view and go to objects as well now what we need to do is position that where we think it needs to be so let's say it's roughly there and then if I just zoom out a little bit and go to the top down view we can see that it's still got the other buildings that are auto generated there so we need to get rid of those so the easiest way to do this again is with the polygon tool so in objects just change it to polygon and then click add if this doesn't start adding it's probably because you've got this polygon collapsed so if I just delete this quickly and then if I collapse this if I click add now nothing happens you can't actually add anything you see something's happening and it's disappearing and if we expand polygon it actually has added them but it's not let us do anything with them so you need to make sure this is expanded so we can delete these existing ones because these won't work so i'll delete all those and now we can click add and then with the left control key held down you get this little red cursor and then with the left mouse button you can just click once and then keep that left control key down click again with the left mouse button and then basically you want to just keep clicking and draw a polygon shape around the buildings that you want to get rid of and then with the final one when you want to complete this polygon all you need to do is double click the left mouse button still with the left control key down and then that will turn pink and then that means this polygon is now ready to go and then for the polygon properties we can just click exclude all and then that will turn off the buildings that were in that polygon and now what we want to do is just place our custom models into the ground more they're hovering off the ground a little bit here so we just get them into the right area where they want to be and we can see that this isn't quite right in the right location so we can just move it around accordingly until he's sitting over the map so there we go we've got those buildings in this is the ikea and we've still got all the auto gen buildings behind because they look okay and just take your time to make sure it's all lined up and you've got it exactly where you want it and there's our first one done we don't need to do anything with this one for now we can leave that one as is so if we go back to our scenery and look for our next collection of buildings so if we come over here i know i've named these as the gov building so again i'm just going to click on gov buildings click add that'll bring them in we can see this building here is this one so we use that as a reference so if we just drag him over and then this one is that building so we can drag them to get them roughly in the same position and if we go all the way around here we can see there's a clear color difference as well between the models but we will fix that in a future video we can see this one is this building here if we bring this up again just untick snap to ground so we can move it up and down we can see that one's coming out there and it's just a little bit too small i'd say i think it's a bit too small so maybe 24 isn't the best scale so let's try 24.5 and if we just go back over here and let's just get it all laid out exactly where we'd expect it to be so about there and then down here we just bring this down a little bit might be 24.5 maybe just a touch too big perhaps although it does need to come this way a bit so let's put that there i'd say 24.5 is probably correct so this one's a little bit more difficult now to cut out we can't just draw a big polygon around everything because i do have all these auto gen buildings in here and i don't actually want those to go so what i find works well here is if you just take the model and then you drag it really high up and then you zoom out you can get like a top down view now and you can see where the models are where you want to cut around so we know these buildings anything under these buildings wants to go so again we can just switch back to the polygon tool click add and then with the left control down just draw around those floating buildings being sure not to draw around anywhere else and then it won't get rid of the auto generated buildings that we want to keep so we should have some auto generated buildings still around here so we exclude all there and then we can do this as a group this as a group this one this this and this so let's just go through those quickly and then when they're all done if you then zoom back in you may find some of them aren't actually in the right position what you can do is just select that polygon and then you can move it around and if you click on the individual points you can drag them in to make them a little more neater so just make sure that they're not killing any buildings that you do actually want to keep so if we look here at these houses down here we actually want them to come in this end one isn't coming in so we do want that so we can just bring this in a bit so it does keep in that auto gen building and then if there are any that are just too far over like these ones are going into the road we can just drag it back to keep it exactly where we want it to be and then when everything's in all we need to do is then drop the main model down into its position just drag it all the way down until it's in location 
making sure as well that we're getting it so it's actually on the ground because we can see here this one's floating a little bit so as we bring this one down into the ground like about there we'll notice over here this is probably taking this bit too far into the ground so there's still a little bit to go on that one so if that one wants to be about there and over here that one's now a bit too high what we can do is two things we can either terraform this area here so this land here is actually higher but i tend to find that doesn't give you a great result or simply with this model because there's not much in it we can just rotate it slightly so if we switch to rotation so you can just go to gizmo and if you don't see the gizmo you can go to view and then gizmo or you can just middle mouse click on the gizmo that's existing and then we can just rotate it ever so slightly that way and then we can now put it into position and this should be in the ground here and the other side should be in the ground as well let's just get it perfectly like that in the ground and zoom out and just double check all this that's about right down there and then we notice around here as well that there's a large hole in the side of this building well in the original google map there was a lot of trees here and that was causing that so the best thing to do here is to simply just move this polygon in a little bit because you don't want to overlap polygons as it can cause issues and then just add another polygon just where that hole is and then simply click on vegetation and then just add in some custom vegetation to fill that hole and if it's not tall enough just change the scale and it will make it bigger and we can see that that's actually coming through the building there and we don't want that so we can just make this polygon a little bit smaller so that doesn't happen and there you go that's enough just to give it the representation of what the trees were like before you can actually go in and add individual scenery trees if you wish but you tend to be flying so high you don't really notice this stuff and it's always worth just going around and just double checking to see if there's any holes in buildings that could be filled in with trees and if there are then just fill them in with that way of doing it we also notice here that there's this auto generated building here and on the google map this building didn't actually exist and here's a prime example of how the google maps can be out of date and the bing maps are actually in date so if we were to go to polygon on this and to remove this we can see there's actually a building there on the Bing maps because this means the Bing map is more up to date. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep this auto gen building here. So we're going to delete the polygon as we don't want that. We'll keep that auto gen building as that's actually more correct. So now we've got two lots of buildings in. We can clearly see that they do look nicer, but the colors really do stick out like a sore thumb. What I'm going to do now is work my way around and add in the other buildings. And again, I'm just going to do the same technique. I'm going to bring it up high and then I'm going to go for this top down view. And then I'm going to draw polygons around these areas where I can see my buildings. Because I know for a fact that will get rid of the ones underneath. And here they're pretty grouped together. So I can be a little bit more liberal with my polygon tool now. And then just exclude everything in there. And then this one can probably be just another separate polygon. And we'll add another one for these top buildings up here and one for down here and finally one for the little church there then with our model selected again we can just drag it down and get it roughly where it needs to be and we can see this one is also suffering from the landscape not being completely even so we can come back and we can do the rotate trick again we can see over here these right buildings they're literally going into the ground to get this one onto the ground here so Let's get it lined up where we want him to be on the left hand side roughly about there and then switch to our rotation tool and we just rotate it ever so slightly and just play with it until we get it roughly about right so he's about there that's about right everything's now sticking out of the ground as expected we can see there's another large hole here which we can use the polygon tool again to just add some trees in there that will have probably been there on the google map so just put a tree to cover that hole and what we also notice here is there's this generic building here and on the google map this didn't exist this is actually a swimming pool called the wave in coventry and what we could do here is just take this building out because it doesn't really look like that building and if we wanted we could just leave the map data just so you get the impression that it's there and the same with this car park here as well if i was actually to reduce this polygon here so this car park loaded in 
you can see the auto gen building doesn't really look like a car park so what I'm actually going to do is just leave the map data of the aerial footage and then when you're high enough because you've got the other buildings you kind of get the impression that it is the car park there you don't need the 3d object because you get a lot of other 3d objects around it so that's a nice little trick as well to do okay so let's now add in the next bunch of buildings which are the university buildings so again just add those in then find our point of reference now I know these buildings have got blue tops and I've got some blue top buildings in so I'm going to use that for my point of reference and I'm just going to bring them in turn off snap to ground so I can drag it up and down and then we're just going to roughly position them over the top they line up pretty well we can see the library building here is lining up well and this looks like it's actually out of line there they should be a little bit further forward maybe so again we can just look at our scale maybe it's a little bit too big if we bring it back down to 24 bring those in a little bit that's probably a little bit more aligned we can always come back in a minute and mess with this stuff when we've got the actual map data underneath it's always best to do it at that point so again i'm just going to drag this up and then i can go around these buildings and turn them off and all we need to do is use the polygon tool click add and let's draw around those buildings that we want to get rid of and now all the buildings are removed we can just drag it down and get it into the right location and we can see here that this is actually off just a little bit there let's try and use that as our position put that there that looks about right there now that's lined up there that's lined up and now we just need to make sure it's all in the ground correctly so that's probably okay there you don't have to be so particularly with getting it exactly at the right ground level because you can't really see from the air anyway and then if we just go around here let's just double check none of this is floating off the ground so we can see it slightly is here so let's just bring it down just a little bit just to compensate for that that should be fine nothing else looks like it's sticking in the ground so we're all okay there and there's another little trick that we can do if we look at the Google map we notice that these blue buildings there was actually an additional blue building here that we didn't capture now we could go back and we could capture that model but there's another thing we can do here is if we just click add and remove this building so we just put a polygon around this building exclude that just move that polygon so it's excluding it now we can just look through the existing scenery objects that are offered by the game and see if there's anything that it can offer us now I know there's quite a few nice buildings throughout the game and if we look at these ones in Lukla I think that's how you pronounce it we've got these generic buildings here and if we just look at generic blue and add that in we've got this giant building because it's scaled to 24 we don't need it 24 let's scale it down to one and bring that in this is just a blue topped building that's got the similar colored side so we can just use this and drop it in place so let's bring it scale up to about three and we'll rotate it so he's in the right area maybe scale him up to four perhaps just so it's a bit bigger and just roughly put it in place and then take off snap to ground and then we're just going to drag it all the way down and then when you're flying over it you can just see another blue building and we've not had to bring in uh, an additional one from google maps so you can get away with just adding in custom buildings as and when if you do find one that suits and you don't need to use it from Google Maps and these are automatically have all the level of detail etc in that you need so you can use them as and when so we can see the city starting to take shape now we can see many of the landmarks that you could recognize from the sky let's just do the last couple here which are the cathedrals and the shopping center so I'm just going to rush through these because there's nothing different that we haven't already seen And there we go we've now got all of our city models in and we've not had to do much with them so the next thing to do now is just go up and do our rico arena which is just up here and this is really straightforward all we need to do is turn off this default building and our default tesco area as we had those two models so we're just going to draw a polygon around there and exclude all in there and then our polygon around the tesco and exclude all in there and then go back to our scenery and the Coventry Rico Arena will add and then we just need to position that where it needs to be and this is where it's really useful having the pitch show through because then you get actual proper shading on the grass whereas if you use their pitch you get the shading that was in Google Maps and it doesn't always look brilliant so let's just get this into position where we need it to be about there 
And now let's do the Tesco. So again, we just need to add that Tesco in and let's drop it into place. And this is a great example here of when we have an uneven landscape. So we can see that the Tesco is way too far down this side and way too high this side, so much so that we're losing this building here. We can try and do the rotation trick and see if we can get it into a good position. And more often than not, that works. The other thing that you can do is actually go into Blender and select these points of the object and then move them up and down to get them to line up. But I tend to find as long as you stick to small enough clusters of buildings, then the rotation trick seems to work just fine. And there we go. We've got our scenery in. We've got our Rico Arena. We've got the Tesco's next to it. And if we zoom back, we've got our city. So the last thing we need to do is save this. So just go to save scenery in the scenery editor. And then we need to save these scenery files. So in our project folder, if we go into package sources and then scene, we need to save our scenery file first, which tells us where all of the scenery we've placed in is. So I'm just going to call this Coventry SCN for scenery and then click save. And then it'll ask us to save the shape file as well, which contains all the polygon information. So I'm just going to call that Coventry SHP for shape and then click save and there we go we've got all our scenery in we've saved it now if we were to go to the inspector and then to our project and click build package that would build us a package we could use in the sim however we're not going to do that yet because if we look at our scenery we can see that it really stands out from the default scenery it seems to be a lot colder a lot more blue and everything else seems to be a lot cooler so it doesn't really blend in properly so we're going to end this video here as we've got our scenery set up and then in the next video we're going to look at how we fix those colors using photoshop i hope this video has been useful if it has please consider subscribing leave any likes dislikes comments down below and i'll see you for the next video thanks for watching and bye for now